Hello everyone, welcome to Redis Conference 2021. My name is Zhao Chao. I'm a senior engineer work at Alibaba. Today, I'd love to share some Redis experience in Alibaba. You know, every year in 11th November, Alibaba will hold the W11 shopping festival. It's a big flash sales show. So, um, Today, my topic is how to use Redis to build the system for handling flash sales. And here is the agenda. First is the self-introduction and my company. More specific, it's about Alibaba Cloud NoSQL database team. And then is the theme, what is flash sales and how to handle it and Redis usage in flash sales. Okay, first, myself. Mm, I am a senior engineer work at uh, Alibaba Cloud NoSQL database team, manage Redis, memory cache, and Tear services. Mm, Tear is an Alibaba developed database. In another word, it's an extent of Redis. Mm, supports some Redis related services like Redis on AEP, Redis on disk and um, multi-threaded Redis. Also, we provide some Redis modules. Um, back to myself, I'm also a member of Redis community core team. Uh, last year, Andy Rice ended his story with Redis, and as his advice, we file active contributors set up the core team to maintain Redis community. And uh, this year, we release Redis 6.2 and now Redis, Redis 7.0 is on the way. Mm, maybe next year. Okay, mm, about Alibaba Cloud NoSQL database. Mm, as a cloud provider, we provide many products such as Redis, MongoDB, and HBase, and so on. Mm, more details about Redis, we provide many versions from 2.8 to 6.0 and many architectures like standalone and cluster and even read-write split series. And except for public and private cloud database service, we also support Alibaba Double Eleven Shopping Festival. Mm. <clears throat> you know, every year in 11th November, <clears throat> Many, many commodities in Alibaba will, on this, will be on sales. It's a very big flash sales party. Our system will receive very huge flows in these days uh, with so many orders. It's a big challenge and we hold it successfully. <clears throat> okay, about the flash sales. Mm, it's a commercial promotion way to attract uh, a large number of users. Mm. For example, a smartphone will be sold only one dollar. Mm. Most people want to buy it, mm. but only a few people could buy it successful. It's the problem. The flash sales will attract uh, a large number of com co customers, but we should. But the commodities could not be used oversold, and we should. Mm, make the access control smooth. Mm, about the flash sales, I think it could be divided into three phases. First, before the promotion, customers keep refreshing the commodity details page. Everyone want to be the first one to access the business system and to buy the discounted goods. Mm, as a result, the number of the requests for the for the page will spike quickly. And during the promotion, customers will place orders and the number of the order requests will reach the limit, will reach the peak. And last, after the promotion, some customers will still um, keep querying the order's status 
and maybe cancel the order. And uh, most uh, other customers will keep querying the, the commodity pages um, with the opportunities uh, to check if someone cancels their orders. So, um, how to handle the flash sale system? Um, the first idea, maybe use the database, um, right? In most cases, the uh, database uh, uses the row level locking. It works um, because only the request that uh, holds the lock can query the inventory data and place orders. Um, but would it uh, work well uh, with the database only? Um, the answer is no, I think, because the database cannot handle the high concurrency because the lock and uh, mm, the data in the in database always stored on disk. Uh, you know, the I.O. operation is heavy and slow. So, mm, moreover, database could be blocked by a large number of requests. So, how to handle the flash sales? Mm, a good way is to use caches. Mm, beginning of all, in theory, mm, in the promotion, our system will receive a lot of traffic. Mm, but not all the requests are valid. Mm, only a few customers uh, could buy the discount goods. So we can build some levels of caches be uh, before the database. Mm, first, it's about the web page. Um, we can use the browser cache and CDN to process user traffic. Uh, for example, um, use static elements to present the details about the commodities. Avoid too many interaction with the backend server. But remember that the place order button uh, should still interact with the, our backend server. Um, and in this way, only a small traffic could flow to the backend server. And then it's about Redis. We can use Redis to block the invalid requests to catch the inventory and do the detection. And even more, Redis could be used as a message queue uh, that can build the async ride system. OK. Uh, first, uh, to block the invalid requests, here we use the Redis counter data type. You can see there are three counters, the goods ID start, goods ID count, and uh, goods size access. The start counter is a flag in the case if the promotion begins, and the count counter is the total number of the commodities will be on sale, and the access counter means how many users access our system successful, successfully. Uh, at the beginning, uh, the goods ID start is zero. It means the promotion has not been started. And then we change it to one. Uh, the promotion begins. And, and then we can increase the access counter if someone access our system successfully. And after the success, uh, access counter, uh, reach the count counter, we should block the subsequent order requests. In this way, our backend system accepts only a small fraction of the order requests in case of high concurrency. Okay, then the next is Redis to catch the inventory and uh, do the detection. Before the operation, we need to load the inventory data from database to Redis. Here we use the Redis hash table data type to do the mapping. Uh, and then you can see that the goods ID is a hash table. A Redis key uh, have two fields, the total number and the book number. Then we can do the de de deduction in Redis. But there is a problem. It's about the atomicity and uh, oversold. We should avoid uh, the booked number exceeds the total number. The last slides about the access counter and the count counter also have the same problem. Mm, to solve it, we can use the Lua script. 
Here is the example. You can see the Lua code here. Um, we check the booked number and uh, total number and increase the booked number only when it's valid. Um, if the Redis returns the value n as the number of goods that customers ordered, our system can determine that uh, the detection is successful. Or if the if Redis returns zero, it means uh, the detection fails. Customers cannot buy it. Thus, we can avoid the oversold. But the Lua script is a bit um, complex. Is there some other way to resolve it? Mm, yes. To simplify the operation, we developed some modules, created some new commands to make it easy. Uh, there are test string and uh, test hash modules. Test string is an extent about the Redis native uh, string. Uh, you know the Redis native string um, can only contains uh, keys and uh, values. Uh, however, uh, test string consists of keys and values and uh, the version numbers, uh, which means the uh, use a uh, tire string, you can do the compare and set operation, uh, such as uh, CES and the CAD commands. Mm, it can be used, it can make UIDs be used in more scenarios, uh, like to build the distribution locks. Uh, oh, sorry. And uh, about the counter, mm, we also offered a uh, the max and min limits. These commands uh, have, mean, uh, have with the max and min limits op option. You can use tire string to limit the range of the counter. If a counter is out of range, an error message is returned. So tire string can instead a Lua to handle the atomic uh, deduction. And then it's about uh, tire hash. Tire hash is a hash table that allows you to set the uh, expire time and the version number to the field. Uh, with the Redis native hash table, um, you can only set the expire time on keys, but tire hash allows you to set the expire time uh, both on the keys and the uh, keys uh, fields. Uh, and more, you can set the version of the fields. And about the counter in uh, tire hash, um, we also um, provide the max and uh, min limits. Uh, you can use the exh increase command. And here is the example. You can see that first the ex uh, increase command um, without the max limit, it can be executed successfully, but. If the counter out of the range with the max limits, uh, you will receive the error message. Mm. So it's very easy, right? Only one command mm, without a Lua script. And these two modules are open source project. You can fork and download them from GitHub. Have fun with them. Um, the last, mm, Redis could also be used as a message queue to um, do the async write um, by using Redis list uh, data type. Uh, for example, the flash sales system push the orders to Redis, and then uh, another module, uh, maybe the async write module, will retrieve the data from Redis and uh, write the uh, order to database uh, by the async way uh, to avoid the uh, write the order to the database directly. Thus, we can in avoid the database blocked. Uh, okay, in summary, um, two points. First, use Redis as a catch about the database um, to block the invalid requests. It can help. Uh, thus, it can help uh, to deduce the database traffic. And second, don't forget to sync the data from database to Redis regularly. That's very important. Okay, that's all. Thank you.
Mm, if you have any questions or suggestions, you can email to me. Here is my email address and my GitHub. Mm, hope my presentation hope my presentation could help you. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.